Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, so it's Wednesday and you know the drill. We follow the same recipe every Wednesday. And there is a reason we do that because we are trying to create rituals that work. So creating rituals that work. I don't wanna, every time I wake up in the morning, I don't wanna like design my entire life. I wanna create rituals that I just keep on doing like brushing my teeth, having breakfast or whatever it is. And the ritual we are using here is that first we learn from others. Uh, um, and I'm using books, books from um, either people living today that are experts on their field or people that are, are, are gone, but we have their writings. It's important to remember that even, so, even though someone is an expert, we do not have to agree with what they say. We can listen, uh, we can agree, acknowledge and respect that they have done a lot of research uh, in their in their subject or topic um, but we don't have to agree with them but we can learn from each other even though we disagree and after the reading we do a physical practice and that is to kind of bring the mind into the physical body to prepare ourselves for the seated meditation that's that's like the recipe we're following here. Okay, so we're starting, I'm still working with the book from Dalai Lama. And this is what Dalai Lama has to say today. We all know that there is an intimate connection between physical well-being and emotional well-being. We know, for example, that physical illness affects our state of mind and that conversely, a greater degree of physical well-being contributes towards greater mental ease. Since we commonly recognize this correlation, many of us engage in physical practices and exercises to help bring about that physical well-being which will contribute to our mental refreshment. There are also certain traditional practices that are aimed at training our energy patterns. These are called prana yogas or yogas of the wind energy. These days, yogic exercises have become very popular in the modern world too. And this is precisely because many people have found that through yoga, they can achieve a degree of physical health that leads to better mental health <clears throat> the approach that is the approach that is suggested by the Shong techniques teachings is slightly different however they concentrate directly on the development of the mind itself through the transformation of our attitudes and ways of thinking okay <clears throat> So <clears throat> what did I hear from Dalai Lama? So what I heard, there is a connection between my physical well-being and my mental well-being. And I can choose to work with my physical body and that's going to have an impact on my mind. Or I can work with my mind and that's going to have an impact of, on my body. And that's what I heard. Okay. Now taking your seat, sitting up tall, maybe uh, lifting the toes, lifting the heels. Maybe notice your breathing, your inhale and your exhale. And then observing your own mind. So what kind of, what kind of state of mind are you having right now? Is your mind very busy? And how do you feel? How do you feel right now? Are you angry, disappointed, happy, bored? How do you feel right now? <clears throat> And then bringing awareness back to your breathing. If you want to, you can place a hand on your belly.
Notice how the belly is expanding on the inhale and moving slightly towards the spine on the exhale. And then bringing your awareness back to your feet and then allow the feet to come to a, a rest. Bring your awareness to your sitting bones. Notice those two sitting bones. You have two sitting bones. Maybe a transfer the weight slightly from one sitting bone to the other. Maybe think about these two points as one, one bone or one part of you is the physical body. And the other part is your, is your mind. And the two work together or they have an impact on each other. The physical body is going to have an impact on the mind and the mind is going to have an impact on um, your physical body. And what is the mind really? Mi the mind is thoughts and feelings. Thoughts and feelings. And then coming to stillness. Allow the neck to be long, the shoulders to release out wide. Slightly tuck the chin. We're still breathing. And then maybe imagine how the crown of the head is reaching up towards the crown. I mean, up towards the sky. Feet, sitting bones, crown of the head. There's one part of you that is heavy connecting to earth. And there's another part of you that's reaching up towards the sky. Constantly lengthening or growing your spiritual spine. So maybe notice how on your exhale, your sitting bones are sinking deeper into the chair and the crown of your head is rising up towards the sky. And then if you want to, you can place your hands on your knees and then start the cat-cow movement. Inhale into the back bend. Exhale round your back. And then finding your way back to neutral, stay there. And then look at your hands, look at your beautiful hands. And just remember all the things that your, your hands have done for you. And then open and close the fingers, maybe imagine your hands as blinking, bubbling stars. All the way up. Clasp the hands, turn them over, straighten the elbows, breathe. Maybe inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And then reach and reach and reach and reach. And then reach both hands up, turn to one side, let the arms go wide. Now think about your fingertips. Imagine how the fingertips are moving away from each other. Look behind you. 
breathe. And then release, lift the shoulders a few times, up and release, up and release. And then look at your hands again, blinking, bubbling stars. Notice how the forearms are working uh, to open and close those fingers. Look at all the small muscles that you have that are making this happening. All the way up, clasp your hands, turn them over, breathe. And then reach and reach and reach and reach. Both arms up, turn to the other side. Let the arms go wide, look behind you. And this time, as you're looking behind you, uh, bring your awareness to your big toes. Notice how the base of the big toes are connecting deeply into earth. And release. Lift the shoulders a few times. Okay, now look at your hand. Imagine your hand as, or your fingers. Remember those old feather pens? Uh, maybe imagine your fingers as a feather pen. And then, uh, Take a color or paint or dye or ink, maybe ink. Maybe we do ink today. And then write a story, write a story. Write a story with that beautiful feather pen. Write a story. And then poof, release. And then look at your left hand. Imagine your, your fingers as feather pens, pens and maybe uh, dip them in ink. And then write a story, write a story. What is your story about? And then release. And then bringing your arms up in cactus and gently turning from side to side. Twisting, a twisting motion in yoga uh, represents perspective. So what does the world look like when you turn to the right? And what does it look like when you turn to the left? So we see different things. The room is still there, even if I don't see it. And what is it that I don't see? It's very hard to see, look behind me and see what's happening behind me. And then maybe go swimming. Okay, now let the knee and elbow connect. E, knee and elbow connect. So maybe the knee, the knee and the elbow, the connection is uh, the, so maybe the knee is your um, physical body and the elbow is your mind. And what happens when the two connect? And then let's cross the midline. So what happens when your left part of the brain connects with your physical body or, your, and your, or what happens when you're right? part of the brain connects with your physical body. Okay, now let's try to, so pit of the belly goes in and up, lift that knee and then stay connected, stay connected, breathe. And then release. 
try the other side. Left knee and left elbow, stay connected. Breathe. And release. And now let's try, try, try both. So bringing both knees up and have the knees and elbows connect. Let's stay here for a moment. So this would be a version of boat posture. A full boat posture would look something like that. And some maybe uh, some of you have that in your practice and you're always willing to take it further or, or go less than I do. You are in charge. And then release. Now, uh, create a wide and stable stance, a wide and stable stance. So I, I put my feet just outside the yoga mat, hands on the knees. So this is like a triangle, a triangle with four corners. So the two feet and the two sitting bones. So a triangle or a part of a triangle with four corners. And then starting to, uh, and with a wide and stable stance, I can go further. I can see different things. I can explore things over here and over there. And that way I can widen my perspective. And maybe here we're playing with one part of us, we can explore the physical body and then the other part, the mind. And if I, if I take a perspective from the mind, what do I see? If I take a perspective from my physical body, what do I see? And then start moving in different patterns. And then coming back to neutral. Now imagine that you're jumping your feet together. So use your feet and jump your feet together, landing in Tadasana. Okay, now look at your toes. Maybe imagine these, your toes as pens and you dip the pen in ink and then you write a story, write a story. What is your story about? And then step out wide elbows to knees, fingertips together, breathe, lengthen the spine. And then release the hands and the head down. Let the head be heavy. Inhale, come back up. And then place the right foot on the left knee. Use your fingers to open up your toes. Maybe guide that knee out a little wider, seated pigeon posture. And then slide the knees together. Whatever leg is on top, that arm goes under. Uh, give yourself a hug. Mm. 
and then from here find your way to um eagle your version of eagle maybe bring that foot behind the ankle the hands move away from the forehead the tips of the of the of the wings move up towards the sky and then when you're ready if you're ready let those Feathers go up high, spread your wings wide, and then land on top of the next mountain. Look at your left toes. Imagine them as like uh, pens. Dip them in ink, and then write a story. What's the beginning? What's the middle? And what's the end of your story? And then step out wide, elbows the knees, fingertips together, lengthen the spine. Pit of the belly goes in and up. Breathe. And then release the left hand down, the right hand goes on your knee. If I have very tall arms, so this is easy for me, but you can always bring the floor up. You can always bring the floor up using a block or books or something that you that's convenient to you. Now, inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale, push into both hands and look up towards the sky. And then release down. Inhale, come back up. Uh, elbows to knees, fingertips together. Lengthen the spine, breathe. And then release the right hand down to the floor or a block. Left hand on the left knee. Inhale to lengthen the spine. Exhale, push into the hands and look up towards the sky. And then release down. Inhale, come back up. And then the foot comes to the knee. Use your fingers to open up the toes. Gently guide that knee out wide. Seated pigeon. And then slide the knees together, whatever leg is on top, that, go, that arm goes under, give yourself a hug. And then find your version of eagle, seated eagle. The hands move away from your forehead, uh, fingertips move up, maybe look up with your eyes only. The chin is still tucked, slightly tucked. to keep the neck long. Okay, now release the fingertips up, spread your wings, spread your wings, and then land on the next mountain. Okay, blinking bubbling stars all the way up, clasp them, turn them over, straighten uh, your elbows, breathe.
Imagine your arms like as wings. Now, release the fingers. Imagine how you're spreading your wings, spreading your wings. And then here you go out flying. Fly away, fly away. And then turn the palms up and then dive down. Inhale, turn the palms up. Exhale, dive down. Inhale, turn the palms up. Exhale, dive down. And this time bring the arms behind you, holding on to opposite forearms. Stay there, breathe. Notice any bruises on your wings. And then use your breath as healing water, healing water. And bring that healing water to any place uh, where your wings need healing. Allow that healing water to rinse and clean and heal. And then release the right arm, shake it out, bring it up and over, place the hand behind your heart. And then release the left hand, shake it out, and place that hand on top of the other. Healing your own heart. Healing your own heart. And then release. Okay, now we're gonna uh, uh, work with the legs and give the legs some strength. So bring the heels a little closer. We're gonna go up and down a few times. So transfer your weight forward and come up to standing. Now pick a number. I'm gonna pick 13. And then let's bend and, and get back up. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. Shake it out. We're going to do it one more time. Trans transfer the weight forward and up. Pick a the same or different number. I'm going to pick six this time. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Shake it out. And this time we're going to transfer the weight forward, come up to standing, and then stay there. Blinking bubbly stars all the way up. Clasp the hands, turn them over. Straighten the elbows, breathe. And then some side bending. Reach. And then let the arms go. And then bend the knees, bend the knees and start moving around. And maybe the story you wrote needs illustrations. And maybe your, now your hands turn to um, paint brushes and you are drawing the story. Maybe you are painting the story, adding illustrations to your story. And then letting the knee and the elbow connect. Crossing the midline. And then finding the position of power. 
feel your own power. Where in your physical body do you feel your own power? And then lifting the foot out to the side, engaging the outer hips. And then lean and lift, lean and lift, breathe. This is a balancing posture, stressful for the body. And then lean and lift to the other side, breathe. And then bending the knees, waking up the front and the back of the legs. Okay, now we're gonna push something away and allow something else to come in. So uh, Dalai Lama talked about the physical body, the connection between the physical body and the mind. So let's push the mind away. Let's try to push the mind away and allow the physical body to take more space. So just play with that idea. Okay, so um, open up your fingers. Imagine your mind or the stories and thoughts and feelings, that's like your mind, all the thoughts and feelings that you have, take that, maybe turn that into a little cloud, a little ball, a little cloud, and then push it away, push it away, push the mind away, push it away. And it's gonna to try to come back in, but you're gonna push it away, maybe you have to kick it a little bit, you have to stay over there, and it's going to try to sneak in from the side and from the back. And you're going to keep the mind away. And then you can release and allow the body to uh, take its space or feel that space. Okay, and then let's do uh, three sound salutations. You can use the chair or not. You can start with your big toes to touch, or with if you want a little bit more of a uh, stable, wider and more stable stance, you can start with your feet hip distance apart. That's your choice. Okay, inhale, arms up. Exhale, up and over. Inhale halfway, exhale fold. Gently bend the knees, inhale all the way back up. Exhale down the midline, that was one. Inhale, arms up, exhale up and over. Inhale halfway, exhale fold. Inhale all the way back up, exhale down the midline. That was two, one more. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, up and over. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way back up. Exhale, down the midline. And then stay there holding your own heart in between your hands with love and compassion. And release. Okay, big toes to touch, heels slightly apart. Inhale to chair, exhale to Anjali Mudra. Transfer the weight to the left, right heel comes off. Take a big step back, find the earth behind you with the toes and then the heels. Hips are, are pointing uh, forward. We're creating warrior one. And then when you have that wide and stable stance with the hips um, facing forward, then you can bring your arms up. Maybe add some blinking, bubbling stars. Place your hands in your back pockets. Transfer the weight forward, pick up that back leg, pick up the opposite hand, 
stay here or maybe add some movement, maybe take the bind. That's your choice. Release the feet back together, bend the knees and come back up to standing. Same thing on the other side. Inhale to chair, exhale to Anjali Mudra. Transfer the weight to the right, left heel comes off. Take a big step back, find the earth with your toes and then uh, your heel. Now, hips are facing forward. When you have that wide and stable stance with the hips facing forward, then bring your hands up and create a warrior one with your heart open. Observing without judgment. And then transfer the weight forward, pick up that back leg, pick up the opposite hand. You can stay here or you can add movement or you can add the bind, your choice. And then bring the feet together, bend the knees and come back up to standing. This time we're gonna step back to warrior two. Inhale to chair, exhale to Anjali Mudra. Transfer away to the left, right heel comes up. Take a big step back, open up the pelvic heart for warrior two. One arm in the past and the other one in the future. So going back to that story that you might wanna write. There is a beginning, there is a middle, and there is uh, an end. Flip the front hand, reverse the warrior. What would, what would the beginning of your story be? And then transfer the weight forward, elbow to knee. How, would your, how do you want your story to end? And then finding your way back to warrior two. What is happening in your story right now? Right now. Hands on your hips, straighten that front knee, release the hand down or to the chair. Bring the gaze up towards the sky. Maybe let the arm follow. Hand comes down, gaze comes down, rebend that front knee. Hands on the chair, pick up that, uh, that back foot, look at your toes. Maybe take the same hand, maybe take the same hand off the chair, just, um, just a tiny bit. Or maybe bring it all the way up towards the sky. Bring the hand down, bring the feet together, bend the knees and come back up to standing. Inhale to a uh, chair, exhale to Anjali Mudra, transfer the weight to the right, left heel comes up, comes up. Take a big step back, finding warrior two. Open up the pelvic half. One arm in the past, the other one in the future and your heart is right here at the present moment. Flip the front hand, reverse your warrior. How does your story begin? Transfer the weight forward. How does your story end? Come back to the present moment. What's happening right now in your story? Right now. Hands in your, on your hips, straighten the front knee, release the hand down or to the chair. Bring the gaze up towards the sky. Maybe let the arm follow. Hand comes down, gaze comes down, re-bend that front knee, finding warrior two. 
Hands on the chair. Pick up that back foot, look at the toes. <clears throat> Maybe take the same hand off the chair. Maybe let it come all the way up to the ceiling. Maybe the gaze will follow. Gaze comes down, hand comes down, feet together, bend the knees and come back up to standing. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> finding uh, ma uh, mountain tadasana. Big toes to touch, heels slightly apart. So starting as a mountain, strong, stable. St a mountain is there for a very, very long time. And now imagine yourself how your feet are starting to grow roots and they go wide and deep and you turn into a tree. Shift the weight to the left, the right heel comes off without the hips changing. The hips are still at the same level. And then grow your tree. What does your tree look like? Maybe it's a traditional tree. Ooh. Or maybe your tree fell over in the rainstorm. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's a really windy day and it's hard for your tree to balance. And then eventually find your way back to the mountain. Breathe. And then transfer the weight to the right. You can put your hands on your hip points. So transfer the weight to the right and then bring the left heel up and notice that the hip, hip bones stay at the same level. And then grow your tree. Grow your tree. It can be a traditional tree. It could be a a completely new version of a tree that no one has ever seen. Maybe it's a very powerful tree. Maybe it's a lazy, lazy tree. I don't know. And then find your way back to the top of the mat. Okay, feet are wider than your hips, spread the toes, release the knees cl fairly close to each other. So creating that triangle with four corners. And if you continue, the top of the triangle would be in front of you. So uh, let the toes open up. Blinking, bubbling stars, place your hands in your back pockets, allow the elbows to move, move closer to each other, breathe. And then maybe bring your awareness to your heart. What is your heart's deepest desire? And then release, untuck the toes, bring the knees wide, big toes to touch, release the hips uh, back, and then find child's posture for a few moments. Inhale, come back up, clasp your hands, and then once again, create that stable triangle with 
four corners. So now it would be your elbows and like your outside of your hands. Tuck the toes. Lean onto your support. Pick up your knees and walk your feet closer to the chair. Uh, armpits are moving towards your legs for dolphin posture. And then bend the knees and come back up to standing. Okay. Now let's move on to the seated meditation. So I'm going to read from Dalai Lama again, and then we have about seven minutes uh, to uh, meditate together. Okay. We all know that there is an intimate connection between physical well-being and emotional well-being. We know, for example, that physical illnesses affect our state of mind and that conversely, a greater degree, degree of physical well-being contrib contributes towards greater mental ease. Since we commonly recognize this correlation, Many of us engage in physical practices and exercises to help bring about that physical well-being, which will contribute to our mental refreshment. There are also certain traditional practices that are aimed at training our energy patterns. These are called prana yogas or yogas of the wind energy. These days, yog yogic exercises have become very popular in the modern world too. And this is precisely because many people have found that through yoga, they can achieve a degree of physical health that leads to better mental health. The approach that is suggested by the Lo, Lo Yong teaching is slightly different, however. They concentrate directly on the develop development of the mind itself through the transformation of our attitudes and ways of thinking. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to be quiet and we're going to do the, the, uh, the seated meditation. So sitting up tall, Noticing your breath, the inhale and the exhale. And then I'll be quiet for about six minutes.
you know, wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, move your head back and forth, take a deep breath in, let it go. Uh, bring, uh, bring your hands into Anjali Mudra, holding your own heart in between your hands with self-love and self-compassion. Maybe bow your head in gratitude for this uh, practice thousands of years old. Thank your inner guide, your past, present, and future teachers, and all the people that are joining you on your journey. Open your eyes, raise your gaze, and thank you so much for practicing together this Wednesday morning. Namaste. Mm -hmm.